Um, what we're going to do is try to squeeze in um, roughly. I thought I had two hours for this. I had 50 minutes, so we had to restructure some things, and it'll be it'll still be good. So just very quickly about me, not that you really care about uh, who this guy is, but just really some context um, for, for her. My name is Aaron Maurer. I work at the Mississippi Bend AEA STEM lead. Um, so I've been doing a lot of this work. Uh, I'm a Minecraft Education Global Mentor, so we just wrote computer science curriculum for Minecraft Education. The new version that will be coming out here soon, hopefully uh, in the next week or so. Uh, I do some stuff with Microsoft as an innovative expert. Uh, so lots of the resources and some things you're going to see with Microbit, uh, at least I've had a, a voice in. Um, and just really anything nerdy in education, uh, I have probably tried to add those credentials to my name in some shape or form. Um, also Lego Education Master Educators who are doing lots of stuff around purposeful play. More importantly this year, the research around the lack of confidence in students in STEM and why that is and what we can do to increase the confidence. So even though STEM is a buzzword and everyone throws up a little bit because you hear it all the time about all that it is and all that it isn't, uh, we still have a lot of kids struggling seeing themselves in those lights. So um, that's why I have a, a website, cognitivebrain.com, which is where I share all the nerdy stuff on a daily basis, so you have that as well. And that's all linked on the website. Here's what we're going to try to do here um, um, in, in this session. Kind of get you introduced to the microbit, what it is, those types of things, it's very basic. Take a really quick look at hardware, um, an even quicker look at the software. We're going to be using what's called a make code um, in order to make this run. So this is all web-based, there's no downloads, you don't have to install any software, um, you don't, kids don't need login accounts, you don't need any of that. So we'll take a look at the software, get you going at some two very quick beginner projects. Fingers crossed we rock and roll through that because then I want to get you doing a radio project where all your micro bits in this room, um, there's a lot of you, and so it's going to be really interesting. They're all going to be communicating to each other. Um, if we can pull that off, and then where all these other amazing resources are and examples to, to wrap up. So uh, I'm excited to uh, get this bad boy up and running and actually see if this thing works. There's a lot of bodies in this room, so uh, <laughs> woo, here we go. All right, so very quickly. The microbit, you have it in those little cases. It's a little tiny, basically a little microcontroller. Um, this has been designed, what I like about it is this. It's relatively cheap, 15, 17 bucks max when you buy it online. You don't need anything else with it. However, I'll show you there's 18 million shields of things to add to it to do whatever you want. If you've been using Hummingbird um, robotics kits, they have a new one now, the Hummingbird Bit. You probably have seen them in the Sphero. If you look, follow Sphero, they have a new robot coming out, like the Rover. It, that's in there. Uh, I have a weather station that uses the micro bit. Uh, all sorts of things. I use it with Raspberry Pis to hack Minecraft. Every time I hit the button, it blows up the world. And there's just lots of cool things you can do with it. Um, and what I like about it is it's, it's low floor, high ceiling. I know everyone likes to claim that, but truly we can get programming and things working rather quickly. So if you've never been to Make Code, if you want to add another tab on your browser just to have it up and running, this is what we're going to be using uh, for the coding for today. Uh, but what I like about it is they keep adding more and more devices to it. So one of the things that's exciting with the schools I work with is once kids get comfortable with Make Code, it's really easy to use the other hardware that schools have available. Lego UV3 now works with this. Um, Q robots work with it. This new beta of Arcade is, is pretty exciting. It works with Minecraft and Circuit Playground, and they just keep coming out with more and more. And so you can start to get to this point, much like Scratch 3.0, Microbits work with Scratch 3.0, so if you love Scratch, you can do these same things in Scratch. We're just going to use Make Code for today. Um, but Scratch has these same additions. This whole idea of open source, people are realizing like, hey, let's just open it up and not make people keep going into these separate silos. It doesn't work. Kids don't remember passwords for pain in the butt. Um, so that's what we're going to be using um, here in just a little bit. This is what the, the micro bit used to look like in 1981 when it first came out by BBC. It looked like a keyboard or a typewriter. Um, if we remember some of those, um, it was huge. And now we have, in 2015, this little tiny device. And this is what it's shrunk to. Um, in the UK, they give this to every single seventh grade student. And it's part of the curriculum, it's part of the school day, every kid has them. Um, which is why you're going to see so many supports, so many curriculum things are out there free for you to use, whether it's computer science, whether you're talking literacy, whether you're talking STEM, it's been developed in some shape or form. 
And so I'm not going to go through the whole history, um, but it's, it, it's been around, it's not going away, and there's lots of research. So if you are a district where people need to show research, I have it linked. If I don't have a hyperlink on the website, I'll throw it in there. Um, but there's been a great deal of research around this uh, and in terms of implementation for academic and mindset success. Um, and so it, it's really fascinating to kind of see some of the stuff in there. So if you're trying to write grant proposals or convincing admin after you see this, um, there's some great research um, in there for you to kind of use and tap into. So very quickly, our, our 30 second education lesson on hardware. Some of you may be aware of this and already know this, so I'm not trying to insult your intelligence. We're just trying to set the stage uh, for what we're going to be using. So what you have, the micro bit, is the hardware. And so what we're going to be using and what we can do when we talk computers and we work with kids is we have all sorts of inputs. When we're talking keyboards or mouse or touch screen or camera, in your case, you have push buttons and everything else on the micro bit that send in signals and then our hardware makes decisions and kicks that out an output and something happens. And this is what we're going to be working on today. You're going to be writing code and when we push buttons or shake it or whatever we, we go to do, all right, it's going to send in that unit, the processing unit is going to process whatever code you put in and it's going to kick out some outputs. And we're going to do a variety of those outputs here today. So looking at your micro bit, okay, there's a lot on here. So I think sometimes we say $15, I think it's cheap and some people go, well, that's expensive. But once you realize all that's on here, you realize, oh, it's actually pretty impressive. So the first thing you have is the old school display, the five by five LED matrix, all right, where you can program this 25 LED structure into lots of different basically pixel type arts or commands, words. You can have phrases scroll across the screen. You can have it show your data. So if we're doing data logging on temperature or moisture samples, uh, we can have it display right there on the screen. You also then have two push buttons, A and B. You can press right there, you can also write code where you push A and B combined. So you have basically three push button sensors that you can code on there. Down here, you also have touch and input pins. The 0, 1, 2, 3, and then you've got your 3 volt and ground depending on servos and motors. But you can then have extra things happen using alligator clips or banana plugs. So I don't know if you use banana plugs, um, but those clip right into those holes. So banana plugs are more stable than alligator clips if you're a Makey Makey user or maybe a microbit user. Banana plugs just whoop, pop right into a hole and you're good to go. So you can plug into there and have different extra sensors go as well. Um, you can also have external power supply. So we use this with some motors and, and speakers. You also have a battery pack that you can plug in on the back. Um, you also, when we go to, I'll show you some shields but you actually have 25 more pins for a potential 25 more outputs. Mm. So this is where you can start to plug this in and have robots move joysticks. You can start to gather all sorts of different things. And I'll show you here in a little bit. Um, and so there's like your edge connector there. On the back side, uh, doesn't look all that exciting except for that's the top is where your USB cable is going to plug into. So today when we start downloading, uh, you're going to plug that into your USB port on your device. There is an app, if you're a Windows 10 user, there is an app for that, and you can do Bluetooth download. We're not going to mess with that today, we don't have time, but I just want you to be aware. <laughs> you can download on an iPad or your phone, and you can send the code Bluetooth-wise. Um, but we're not going to mess with that today, unless you want to try that on your own. We just don't have enough time to try to troubleshoot that, because it's, every device is different. But just be aware that that's an option. If you're a Windows 10 school, you get the app works pretty well. But with that, you have a reset button, so um, when we go to load our code, it's always going to run whatever the latest code is. So if you unplug it, plug it back in, it's going to default to whatever code it is. It will always run that until you load a new set of code. So sometimes you have to do a hard reset, and you just push that button, and it just erases what's ever on it. Um, the battery connector, that's where your battery pack's going to go when we go to do our final challenge here today. If you haven't plugged in with the USB, your computer will just power it. So you don't have to worry about having the battery pack and the USB. That's actually, um, they prefer you, prefer you don't do that. It's not going to hurt anything, um, but you know, it can start to overheat. This is where your little processor is. So we talked about the hardware. This is where all the processing is going to happen. Um, and anything else you really need to know, uh, there's an accelerometer. 
So um, typically in a longer workshop, we make watches with the micro bit. We do like rock, paper, scissor, and you can shake it, accelerometer. Uh, we've done data logging for a math class. We've attached the micro bits to the bottom of the swing and then documented the trajectories and done some math calculations. Um, you can make turn it into a pedometer, put it on the kid's feet, things like that. Um, and then so that you have the, the, the compass on there as well. And then there's lots of other things that you can start to add um, to make this thing go. So there's lots of sensors, lots of things that you can do without having to buy anything else on the, on, on the market that exists. And you're going to see that there's lots of things uh, that you can do. Uh, but we're not going to spend time on them, but just to show you, there's all sorts of different kits that are out there. So if you want something, it's there. And so um, it, it, it's pretty amazing. So the software then, we talked a little bit about hardware and what you have on the hardware. I know it's fast and furious, but just so you kind of have an idea of what you're dealing with. Um, the software is what gives the, in this case, the micro bit, the, the brain power to do anything. So the devices by themselves are dumb, we have to make them intelligent. And so when we work with a lot of kids, that's what we try to tell them, your, your device is only as smart as you are, so we have to like help it do everything that we need it to do. Um, and when you jump on main code, you're gonna see it rolls just like Blockly or Scratch, angles drag and drop interface blocks. <coughs> Um, just like all those others, all the colors mean things, things like that. So, um, let's do this. If you're not already on makecode.com, let's jump on there. And if you haven't clicked on the micro bit icon, go ahead and click on that. All right? And you're going to see all sorts of different things. We're not going to spend time on here, but I want you to realize once you get to that micro bit page, you're going to find tons of tutorials. You're going to find a ton of projects. You're going to find curriculum. You're going to find so much that's already been developed, tested, out there for you to go. So it's all in one space. So like when I work with that, there's a fourth grade class that I've worked with now for a couple years, we start with some of these tutorials and we can guide them. We know everyone can kind of be in the same pace. I don't have to keep reinventing the wheel as we go through. I'm not going to go through every single element on here, but I'm just going to highlight a couple things because we're going to get coding here right away. This looks just like your Scratch program, so hopefully you're starting to see some overlap. So they, they're all in it together. All these companies aren't trying to work against each other, but they all have obviously their, their own reasons for things. And so all your coding blocks are going to be right here in the middle. And we're not going to get too advanced today, but one of the things that I always like to point out is there is a search. So they're not going to show you all the blocks. There are hundreds. They might actually be up to thousands of blocks, but they don't want to overwhelm you. And so if there is something that you want this microbit to do, I guarantee there is a block. You just have to search for it. And there are resources to find out what all these blocks are. But like if you go right now, if you were to click in the basic, there's only a handful of blocks that show up. Why? Because in basic, it shouldn't overwhelm you with 37,000 choices. But realize there are a lot of basic blocks available once you start diving into this a little bit more. This here is a simulator. So as you're writing code, it'll run it over here. Um, the buttons do work. So when we go to code, you can actually test your code before you download it to your device. You can shake it on the simulator. So they keep adding more and more features to this um, to kind of see how it works. When we go to run this radio activity, you can actually see how it works between another micro bit will show up if you write code. So you can sample it on there. So if you want to go back and use this in your classroom, um, and you don't even have micro bits, you can just use a simulator just to kind of get a taste for some things, and then kind of work from there. Um, and you can always hide it. So if you want, you should have an option. I think it's somewhere down here. You can actually hide that if you just want more coding space. If you're not worried about the simulator, um, you have that. This is where you're going to do all your coding. You just drag and drop your blocks. Down here is where you name your files. Uh, one thing, it probably won't happen so much today, uh, but figure out a naming system for your program. Because it automatically defaults to untitled, and what will happen is the kid will eventually have 30, 40 untitled projects, and they spend more time clicking through trying to find that one project they worked on that one time. So come up with a naming system um, so that you can find it. And everything rolls from here. If you're secondary and you want your kids to move beyond blocks, you can click up here and it'll turn it to JavaScript. 
And one thing we won't talk about, but just so you're aware, you can also code in Python. So if you are a Python school, you can download the Move Python Micro Python Editor, and you can write everything in Python. We're not going to dabble in that today, but for those that are secondary, thinking like I need more than blocks, you can do all of those things in there. The last of the things that, um, and then we'll get going into how it works, is you have a share option. So I talked about that you don't have an account, um, so how in the world do kids come back and retrieve their files, things like that. It stores everything in the cache of the device. So what I mean by that is, if I'm coding on this computer, if I log into this computer the next day and go to makecode.com, my files will show up on the browser. However, I log into another, another device, my programs won't be there. So it stores it in the temporary files. But you can, when you download, you'll actually get a hex file, and that is the actual code. And we'll show you here in just a minute. So what we do, a lot of schools I work with are Google schools. We have the kids create a Google folder, and they load all their files into that folder, and they have it. And then what we do is we, the ones that we've been working with for a while, we have them save different versions. So when they go to tell their story, the process of learning, because a lot of people when they go to display their learning don't understand the coding, they can say, here's where I first started, here's my progression of coding, things like that. Um, if you're a Microsoft school, a lot of schools use them in, in OneNote or OneDrive or Teams or whatever you're using. Um, as a teacher, uh, when I go and work with schools, we have them submit their files in a Google form. So I have them all listed right there, and that's an easy way for me to go and check. Because I can load them up, you just click the hex file, and it opens up. But the sharing is kind of cool. Um, so you can embed your code in the simulator into websites. So if you have kids with portfolios, say like a Google site, they can embed this whole screen of their code onto their portfolio page. So they can show that. That's how they can share. You can publish it, lots of things. So just sharing all that, just so you know there's lots of options. And so if you're thinking through logistics, if you have questions at the end, obviously we, we can work through some of those. So let's get going on this. Okay? So let's do this. On your browser, let's go into basic. And let's just drag over this show icon block. You should have a show icon block and just drag it over into your on start block. And it'll click right in, just like if you use Scratch or Blockly, um, whatever you've got. And you'll notice next to the heart is a little drop down menu. And if you click under there, there's all sorts of pre program icons. Let's just pick one. And what you should see is a couple things. One, it should show up in the simulator. So if you have like a heart, you should see a heart and a micro bit off in the simulator. Okay, and if you change that, the image will change. But what I really want to do here for this particular one, not that this particular code is all that mind-blowing, but it's not, is I want to make sure we know how to get the code from our device to the micro bit. Uh, it's not hard, but you have to physically drag the code to the micro bit. So if you've never used a micro bit, your computer treats it like a USB flash drive. So if you think about dragging your file folders, I don't know if anybody uses flash drives anymore, probably not, but back in the day, I guess we can start saying that now, when you had your, all your files on your desktop and you had to go home and do work, and you remember dragging all your files over, this is the same kind of process, we have to drag it over. So, what you're gonna do is once you have it, and you have your icon. I just want to make sure you can see your animation on your physical micro bit. You're going to click this download button. And yours is down at the bottom. This is that purple download button. You're going to click that, and you're going to see, depending on how you have your, your computer set up, this is where it gets a little tricky because it's not going to be universal for everyone. But two things are going to happen, roughly. If you are a PC user, a Windows user, you should get this some sort of warning, unless you've already asked your different default set up of what you're going to do with this file. The easiest thing to do is to just hit that up arrow, hit save as, and then normally when you would click like wherever your flash drive was or your folders, you should see, I should let me take a step back, let's also plug in your micro bit to your, to your device. And if you are, I see some people have, have tablets, if you want, if you're able, I don't know what your permissions are, I don't know if you're able to download app, but if you search for the app, you can just do it all through Bluetooth if you want to download uh, so that you don't have, obviously, U USB ports on your, on your tablet. And I can come around and help you with that if you get stuck. Or maybe just join someone that has a, a USB port. 
once you have that plugged in, I'm sorry for not having you do that first, you should see microbit over on your sidebar. And you're just going to click microbit, hit save, and then what will happen is on the back side of your microbit, it'll flicker like a, a yellow light will flicker. That lets you know that it's downloading the code to the actual microbit. And I'll come around and help. Once we get this figured out, we're in smooth sand. This is probably the hardest part of the microbit. If you are a Mac user, okay, uh, once it downloads, for me, it showed up in the bottom of my screen. If I download something, I'm going to click that arrow to show in Finder. Then, for me, all my downloads show up. I know it's a little blurry, probably hard to see from the back. I literally just take that file and I just drag it, I mouse click drag it to microbit. So I'll just drag it on down to microbit and you'll see it flicker and then hopefully the animation will show up on your screen. So let's take a couple minutes to make sure we can get our code, our animation from our code to our microbit. And if we can kind of crowdsource help one another, so once we've got that, then we'll get into the next thing. So let's take some time, make sure we're rocking and rolling, I'll help troubleshoot, and then we'll get moving on. Super struggling. Are we, are we good? Are we good on that? For the most part? Okay. If not, you don't want to raise your hand and be that one person. Just give me the eye nod here. This next child will come help you. All right. So now that you kind of figure out how the download is, we would normally, in, in a longer session, working with kids, we would never go this fast. I hope you know that in 50 minutes. Like, like that right there, what we just did, I would spend like a day on what is hardware, a day on what is software. Like, hey, Let's just mess with the simulator. Hey, now, let, you know, like, you would definitely slow this down. So I know we're going, like, rapid rate. So I don't want you to think, like, I would never get all this in in a day. Yeah, I wouldn't expect you to. But once you get past that barrier right there, man, things just skyrocket. So let's look at, just very quickly, the input buttons. Just so we can get a sense of this, to kind of see how this works. So you have, right underneath basic, you have some paint. that says input. And you're going to see all sorts of blocks. One you see on a button press, on a shake. So the shake now is going to trigger the accelerometer. So if I drag that over every time I would shake the accelerometer. These pins are the one, two, and three on the bottom of your micro bit. So if I wanted to code things out, so I have a Halloween costume I'm building for my seven-year-old using the micro bit. We've got NeoPixels, we've got sound effects, we've got a speaker thing, all just banana plugged out. So all these triggers, she has, and she basically has a remote control that she can control these with another micro bit. And when she hits A, the eyes light up. When she hits B, you know, whatever. This does, her dad's a complete nerd. So, um, <laughs> but what we just want to focus on for now is let's just drag over this on button A press. Because all these buttons work the exact same way. It's just obviously a different input command. And what you can do then is let's just drag, so we just use it to show icon. But underneath there, let's just show an icon. And then we can drag over another input. Let's just do the shake one so you can experiment with that. And these are both, these blues are under basic. There's a show string. And type in hello or I don't know, whatever you want to do, coffee, sun, whatever. And once you have this, and if you want to do another one, go for it. You just, I'm just going to give you about five minutes to experiment. You download it and then try it. So if you push the A button, in this case, if I hit A button on the micro bit, a heart would show. If I shake it, it would say the name hello. If I push the B button, I would see this kind of cascading pyramid or staircase. 
So I'm going to give you just five minutes. Just play with the inputs. If you just want to start with one and see how it works. And like I said, if you want to test your code before you download and drag, you have the simulator. So if I were to push button A press with this icon on the simulator, if I push the A button on that simulator, it should show that icon. To shake it, you've got to like, kind of like click it and move it. Like hold your mouse down and I think there's a way to shake it um, on the simulator as well. So let me give you some time with those inputs so you can kind of see how that works. I'll try to be around to help, but this room's not really perfectly ideal for me to kind of navigate through unless I get super scared for the next 12 seconds. So. This is our, actually a really great lesson for kids, even though I know there's like AirPods and everything wireless now. Um, but I guess we could also say again, back in the day when we had tethered headphones. Um, so you use alligator clips. The bottom of the, of the, of the um, headphone plug is your positive, and right in the middle is usually like a black ring. Above that is the negative. So you clip into those, and you clip into zero and one, or wherever you, how you want to write your code, and you can actually play music. Then if you want, you can get into, into Python, you actually code voices, you can code notes and keys, there's notes and keys already in the code, but you can actually like code voices, adjust tempo and pitch. So uh, I'll show you a project here in the end where we work with fourth graders, not every student, but those that really wanted to rock with it were in Python. I was blown away, eight, nine year old coding Python, like two groups, and now I'm not saying all 60 kids, and they were coding tempo and making their robot voice sound like a legit robot. And I was just like blown away, like holy cow. Um, so yes, and you can buy cheap little um, little microphones, even like those like little mini headphones or speakers. Uh, I buy them on like Adafruit or like under a buck a key, like thirty cents. You can buy like a, a bulk of a hundred uh, for like six bucks, and you can play like little musical notes. And obviously, it'll play it through your speakers if you want to keep it tethered to your uh, device. So um, there are, there is a way for everything. Any questions so far on what we've kind of dabbled in? I know it's quick, but I just want you to kind of get your feet wet a little bit. Okay, so this is the part where um, I don't normally share the radio and like beginner, but I want people to realize the capabilities of these devices because I think it's like, oh, there's lights, like, yeah, hey, everything has lights. Oh, push buttons, everything has push buttons. Like, yeah, you're right, they do. Like, what separates this device? And besides, without getting into complicated code, that isn't worth your time here in this session, but in terms of what the, what the micro bit can do. So here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna explore radio and see if we can pull this off. I'm really excited and nervous at the same time. 
So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be communicating all our devices. We're going to be sending radio signals back and forth, and we're going to get you guys grouped by communication between microphones. All right? And the reason I'm sharing this with you is just think about possibility. Like, I don't know where radio fits into curriculum. I don't have that answer. But just thinking through what we can do with these types of devices. So here we go. I'm going to walk you through this. And I'm going to, on the, on the website, if you load up to the website, the sample code is on there. So if it's just easier for you to kind of find those blocks, but I'm going to walk you through. But you have, like, the answer key to this code. Um, but here's what we're going to do. We're going to be exploring the radio block. So it's under the LED. Okay? But before we get into how to code, here's what I want you to think about. Don't share your answers. So we can like unveil the magic of radio signal. But we're going to take a look for like what you're most looking forward to this Halloween. So I have six options. And you're going to pick which option is most likely you. Okay? So the thing you're most looking forward to, if it's Scary movies, remember that you are number one. If you're most looking forward to haunted houses, you are number two. If it's all things apple, my wife just made a killer apple crisp last night, so I'd probably pick that one. You're going to be three, Halloween candy, four. If you like pumpkin spice everything, that's five. And if you're like, screw Halloween, bring like Christmas, you're group six. Okay? So I want you to pick one of those groups. You're a one, two, three, four, five, or six. Okay? So get that in your head. Here we go. You're going to go to your code. And on the start, you're going to go into radio, and there is a radio set group. You're going to drag that block under start. It defaults as a 1. This is where you're going to place whatever group you chose, 1 through 6. You have 255 groups. If you want to do a massive school project and crazy things, there is stuff where like, we've done projects with like, like the Black Plague where kids have to simulate like death and numbers. Like, you can do some really cool stuff. But for now, you should have a one, two, three, four, five, or six. Okay. Then we're going to go to input. And you're going to drag that A button on over, just like we just did in the previous session. And then we're going to go back to radio. And you have a radio send string. So on the A button press, this radio censoring, I want you to put your first name. I'll show the total code here in a minute, so if you're still working, you're, like, you're going too fast, just we'll get it up on the screen for you. Okay, we're going to add one more radio block. So under radio, okay, it's a little bit further down, but it's on radio received. You're going to drag that over. Receive number or name value? Receive string. Receive string. Uh, you want receive string. On radio received, receive string. Okay, and our last piece of code, we're going to go back up to basic, and under that receive string, you're going to drag over show string. Well, there's lots of cool ways. This is where you can divide the road. So if I want to teach you variables, I could stop here and have kids create a variable, and we can work through that. If they're not ready for that, that's not the point of the lesson. You can bypass all that. So what you can do is if I click and hold down receive string, I can actually grab that and drop it in here. It'll automatically copy that block down. So if you click it, you'll see like a hand grab, bring it down. And so you should see show string, receive string. If that's not working for you, just keep trying. Sometimes it can be a little finicky. Oh, it's got to be yellow. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. So that was a recent addition. I didn't always used to be yellow. So they keep upgrading things. So this is what your total code should, should look like. All right? On start, your radio set group, whether you're one through six. A button press, we're sending a, a send string of your name. On radio received of receive string, receive string. So I put in the, in the notes, and if not, I, I can show the, I'll, I'll make sure I link it in there. You can add comments to all your code. Here's what's going to happen. 
you're going to press the A button here. And just gonna, we're going to download it to your micro bit. We're going to clip in the battery packs. All right? Every time you press A, it's going to send your name to everybody who's in that group. So what's going to start to happen, ideally, is you're going to start to see Joe, Samantha, Jennifer, whoever is in that group. Because what's happening is I push A, I'm sending this string out. And then this code says, I'm receiving string, we're going to show it. It's going to show it on that 5x5 five five pixel. So here's what I want to do, and I don't, we'll see. This, and it may not be ideal because I know this space is a little tight, but at least we can maybe get up and move. I want you to download it to your micro bit. You're going to unplug it from your computer, plug in your battery pack, and then hit A. And you're going to start seeing names, and let's see if you can start to find some people that have the same Halloween sorry, interest as you. And like I said, we might not be able to all move, um, but we can at least start to, to snag other people who like either Halloween candy or haunted houses or whatever it is that you have chosen. You want us to find the other people? Yeah. Yep. So we can speak. Though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, yeah, you can verbally speak. <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. So while you're doing that, what I like, what I like about this with kids is kind of like a old school, basically like text messaging, and we can start to teach kids like communications and different types of signals, but on a very kind of surface level of concept. Are our batteries dead by chance? Uh, there's a good chance, like you have a ton of batteries, but you're gonna have. You're, you also have to be waiting for someone to hit the button that's in your group too. So your screen will look blank until someone triggers your group.
Oh, you're listening. Oh, you're listening. Alright, well, go ahead and say farewell to your new uh, Halloween friend and return back and grab him. some of this stuff and um, you, know, you can keep tinkering here, kind of listen with one ear while you keep dabbling stuff. Feel free to keep playing and exploring. Um, but a couple of things that we kind of share through this here. Uh, we talked about uh, all the different types of things that are out there. You can control servos and motors and LEDs and uh, if you're into like NeoPixels and you can start to create some pretty awesome projects. Um, if you're a Scratch user, all right, some of the things that we keep dabbling with now that's really exciting, especially around Halloween, you can write code where we have projects. I, I should have I should showed a video. I'll, I'll try to find it and I'll load it on the website because it's, it's really, really bad. Um, but it's, it's so bad, it's almost, almost kind of good. Where we had a makey makey that triggered a Halloween prop. So thinking scratch, not make code. So I know I'm kind of, that's how my brain works. But this week, it's, I know a lot of you use scratch. So I had a makey makey that was the, the doormat sensor. So kids came up to trick or treat at our house, they step on the floor mat, and making making would trigger a witch scream. I had a computer next to it. Okay? But I also had a micro bit that controlled servos and controlled other things. So I had an old school Raggedy Ann Halloween mask. Remember like Halloween at box days? I'm really dating myself. And we had we programmed LED eyes in there. So when the when the code triggered, when it read that the making making also kind of turned on the making making screen, but then my micro bit, the arms started to move and the eyes lit up. Um, and so why I'm sharing that is, as you get into like scratch, you can start to use multiple hardwares together. So just because you're using micro bit doesn't mean you can't use Lego AV3 and you can't use make, you can use all of it. So we use like the Makey Makey are great for game controllers and devices. So we use that for triggers. And we use like the micro bit to get motors, because trying to get motors on the Makey Makey is a nightmare. You have to do some serious hacking that they like made it like super child proof. Um, but the micro bit, you can do servos and things like that. And then you could have an EV3 robot that goes up and down the hallway or whatever you wanted to do. So those are bigger contexts of things. But just realize like, you know, the integration of several things that you have in your classroom um, can all work together. So the last couple things, uh, these are just some other things that people have done. These are part of the curriculum that's available. Um, the curriculum was written for middle school, but it's readily accessible. It's easy to scale up to a higher level. Uh, and it's also really easy to scale it down to elementary. So they wrote it middle of the road for those reasons. But we've done stuff like design thinking with a wall and a purse. Uh, you see the soil mo moisture. Well, the one that the lesson one is micro pets. They do design thinking and interview a partner, find out what the ideal pet is, and they have to make it, and they have to use the micro bit to make it come to life. Um, I've done that with a couple of school districts, and it's, it's worked great. Musical instruments, um, this little inchworm using cardboard and a little servo motor is great. Um, there's lots of things that are out there. Um, just sharing the curriculum, this is kind of how it flows. Not that everybody's looking for curriculum, but I just want you to realize that a lot of this stuff is you don't have to go create it. Um, it's all laid out, it kind of follows that structure. And you've got access to the slide deck and, and these things as well. Um, but a couple things that I want to show on the website really quick, because then I want to make sure you guys have time for questions, because uh, I'm sure you might have some. But I bombarded a lot of stuff on here, and it wasn't meant to overwhelm you, it's to continue your learning afterwards. So there are some videos, these actually have voice, and just how we set up and getting started in case you want to go back and kind of relearn. Um, here's like how to do the rock, paper, scissor activity. Uh, this is Minecraft selfie. So when you get rock and roll out a Raspberry Pi uh, with a Steve cardboard <coughs> mask with a Raspberry Pi camera in it. So when the kids triggered a button using the micro bit, Minecraft Steve took your picture and then printed your face in the Minecraft world in a huge 500 by 500 block um, canvas, so you had a, a bit image of yourself. And kids love this because for most kids their lips are red, which means in Minecraft you're getting the TNT blocks. So after it printed their face into the world, 
you can trigger, you can basically punch yourself in the mouth and blow it all up. So I'm sharing that as you can start to do some really kind of awesome things. This is another one using radio. I created a tic-tac-toe board, and then you can, the link will take you everywhere you want to go. Um, but then we scale it to, to Hollywood Squares. So we actually have a bunch of teachers that gave all these clues to figure out to tell the truth or not, and then you can keep score playing tic-tac-toe and have like, the scoreboards here and everything else in the grid. So you can start to have kids create some pretty awesome things, um, or yourself. The micro bit works really well, the accelerometer, so it was scratch. We've created maze challenges, and the kids have to create a joystick with the micro bit using the accelerometer to control the sprite through their maze. Kids love this. So scratch, a lot of you know, not in your head, but you also know after like seven minutes, kids start just jacking around. Like, how do you hold their focus? What well, we have found the work is give them something physical to make. The ownership piece is huge. So you're going to create a game, and I need you to create a joystick because we're going to have our own arcade in the hallway for other people to play. And those little things, it's not a magic bullet. You're still going to have your ding dong, but it holds <laughs> the animal type of things. Um, we launched a project last year, 25 Days of Making. I had 25 experts from around the world share a maker project, which teachers are using in their classroom. Um, and one of them was Jacqueline Russell, who actually is the content and lead program manager for Make Code. Um, and she created this one using like an ornament, so they had like a Christmas tree or a holiday tree, and then kids could design all their ornaments, and then they could all be radio synced up so they blink at different times. So just think about applications of just how you can do a bunch of different things uh, that are in there. Um, the last thing that I'll show is just down here, and then I, we've got four minutes for questions. These are the two complete projects I did with fourth grade students. Um, I like. Uh, this is one that was down called here. It's over here. Wild Robot Escape, the Global Read Aloud book, two years ago. We read the sequel to Wild Robot Escapes. So we had kids build out a cardboard their own rocks, come up with its own name, and all the lessons are in there. So the very first activity is we got them excited about their own robot. Then we talked about can robots actually feel emotion? Because you hear time and time again, not these kids, but society, they give robots a, a pronoun name, he, she, and actually it should be it. So we talk about can robots have emotion? Because Roz obviously shows emotion or in the kid's mind. So then we had them code like what does like emotion look like on a pixel? And they kept building up. And you can see there's access to the foot grid. We got permission. You can see the kids actually doing the Python coding with the speaking and the noise and all that good stuff. And so as they read the book, we had build challenges to go along with the content of the, of the reading. So we're weaving literacy and computer science. Last year we did Greek mythology. So we're doing social studies, literacy, and computer science. So each Greek myth, we scaled up the complexity of the coding. Uh, so we started with like Orpheus making musical instruments. We continue to scale up, trying to bring the mythology to life when you have that kind of ownership. So all that stuff is there. Um, this is the design thinking of the micropat that I did with the whole entire district in December last year when no one wanted to be there for a full day. Um, and it was really exciting. Um, but they did some incredible stuff uh, that you can check out there as well. So those things are there. And then just tons of resources um, that are available. And there's a wake link down here that I just keep adding to every time I come across. So probably more links than you ever care to actually click on. Uh, but I just want you to know that it's all there. So with two minutes, what questions do we have or something I didn't cover that you were hoping that I would cover that I could answer um, before we rock and roll? I know that was fast and furious. But hopefully you got a chance to explore a little bit, kind of see how they work. Um, yeah.